This looked a little puffy last night. I got up this morning and boom. Tune in to find out more to see what happened here. So just a quick one today this morning in the shelter in place in Northern California. It's about LiPo batteries. Probably one of the most important things about your hobby because it can protect your collection, you can protect your house. So this one is one of my oldest batteries, maybe three, four years old. I don't use it that much because it's so huge. And it was a little puffy, you know? I don't use it that much, but just a little bump and you, I'll, I'll try to find some old video where there's, it's sitting on the side, it's just a little fat. And this morning I got up and I'm like, boom, it's like four times as large, not four times, twice as large, but I wasn't even using it. I wasn't even charging it. And thinking about it, I've come to realize what happened is it was always this puffy, but it's on a hard case. And so I never really saw the real condition of it. If I saw it like this, I would have discharged it and gotten rid of it right away. But because it was just a little bump, you know, I said, ah, oh, no big deal. It's just a little, it's just a little stressed. And, and little did I know, the hard case just keeps everything squeezed in and it has to have, you know, so much stress for it to actually pop the case. And that's what it did, it popped the case overnight without me even charging it or using it. So it's a real danger and I, wa I wanted to make this video about it. Um, this definitely has to be discharged and disposed of in the recycling center. Get it out of my house as quickly as possible. So I already discharged it. Okay, so what's going on is what happened. Why do batteries get puffy? The reason they get puffy is they're stressed and they're stressed in, in two or three ways. Uh, the most common way is you go get below the minimum charging voltage or discharge voltage, which is about three volts per cell. So once it gets there, it's in a bad state, it'll start puffing up. Uh, it's not gonna blow up, but the next time you charge it and use it, you know, it's gonna be unbalanced, it's gonna be in an unstable state. The next thing that can cause it is you are discharging it too fast. You know, so you have a, you have a big car, you know, you're, you're just gunning it the whole time and you're discharging it at a rate faster than what the battery can handle. This can handle 50 C. That's the, that's the discharge rate. So maybe I'm discharging it at 100 C or something. And the last part, which is the most dangerous, it gets puffy because you're charging it wrong or you're, you're charging it beyond 4.2 volts per cell. So, um, and that's the real danger because when you're charging it, it's when you're packing in power uh, and it, with, when it gets distressed is when a fire starts. Um, so how does a fire start? So this is actually a good lesson of what's in a LiPo battery is these cells. So in this case, it's a three cell battery for 11.1 volts. So there's these three cells in plastic sheaths and they're just connected by wires and whatnot. So this is a lithium polymer battery. And, and that's why, so every, all the technology is in these, these uh, strong plastic sheaths. And what happens is when this plastic uh, cracks or breaks because of this stress, you know, of, because of being puffy, then the element inside does not like air. Oxygen is good, oxygen is good for fire. It'll light the cell on fire for sure. And I'll try to get some video of that for you. And the fire will be so intense, the bigger the battery, the more intense the fire, it will, it will burn anything. You know, luckily it's only like a minute, depending on how, how big your charge is, but it's a real danger. And we have a really detailed video on what causes these fires, 10 causes, uh, 10 dangers of these LiPo batteries. Um, so there's, there's the danger right here. It's living in my garage, in my collection. So gotta, I gotta give a shout out to you guys. Take care of your stuff. Puffy batteries, get rid of it. So, uh, and I'll have a bunch of links to uh, batteries that you can purchase. So look at, and then I said, oh, okay, let me check out my other batteries. You know, what the hell's going on? And uh, not good. So most of what I use now is soft cell, soft case. You know, we don't need hard case batteries. Hard case are for fast cars. 
if you want to protect against impact, a drone or whatnot, and it can get penetrated, uh, you want a hard case for that protection. But for crawlers, uh, slow cars, you know, soft case is fine because uh, you save weight. And now you can actually see the condition of your soft case batteries pretty darn nicely. You could, if this gets puffy, you'll see it right away. Okay, so a couple things I noticed on these batteries, uh, two of them really bad is the heat shrink cracked over time, you know? So right there, that's exposed and that's bad. Gotta fix that. The, the, the reason is if, if, if one's exposed, it's not the worst, but if, it, if another positive wire touches it, that'll spark and cause a fire. But if the other one gets exposed, then any piece of metal, you know, any little screw or whatnot can cause them to short circuit. Same thing here. So inspect your batteries, please. Exposed. And then this one just came off. So this one is a dangerous thing because that can touch right there. Once it's free, you know, they're free to touch. Uh, you can even, and, and any short circuit will uh, discharge the battery so fast that it will heat up and, and, and cause a fire. So most of my batteries now are these Gens Ace Adventure 3600, very small, uh, fits in a lot of crawlers. I used to use this Eco Power, so I highly recommend this. I've stressed them out, uh, discharged them, you know, killed them, put them to two volts, and they're still going strong, they're still balanced. So, can't recommend these enough. By the way, if you discharge your battery below three, three volts per cell and it won't charge anymore, it's because of a safety feature on the chargers. It's not because the batteries are bad, it's just because of a safety feature in char on chargers and you can put them back to life rather than throwing them away. I mean, rather than disposing of them and using all your, your investment. So click here for that video. And so I'm gonna do the soldering job. So these, these are not easy, so easy to solder because you have to really heat up the, the wires for the solder to stick. And you need a good soldering job. You know, you, that solder really has to just melt and, and really disperse on the metal for you to have a, a, a good solder that will last a long time, you know, with all the stresses these, these uh, take in. And heat shrink tubing is important, of course. And I need to remind folks that, so I'm using Dean's just because of historical. These are, I, I forgot what these are, XT, XT60 or XT90. The, these are the best, the, these are very good con uh, connectors, but I need to change them to Dean's. But this is probably the most dangerous time you're gonna deal with these batteries because what you do is you cut them, you cut the wires, and it's best to, you, to do this job when the battery is discharged. So you cut the wires and you strip, you expose the leads, ready to solder. And anytime those two leads touch while you're working is a danger zone. You know, it, it's, a, it's a real short circuit, especially the more powerful the battery, the, more, the higher the discharge rate. So you have to be very careful. Maybe strip them one at a time, you know, so you have uh, less room for error until you get to the covered uh, stage where they're insulated, you're, you're kind of in a, in, a, in a danger zone. So be very careful. Make sure you do a good soldering job. Finally, I'll talk about chargers. What chargers should I use? And unfortunately, they're very expensive, the good ones, and they're, very in, they're in very short supply, you know, in Amazon and Amain. And here they are. So this is my favorite. It's the Hobbymate. Hobbymate's a company. They sell under different brands. Toolkit RC is another one they sell under, but this is their, what is this thing called? The Duo Pro, D6 Duo Pro. It's my favorite because it's, it's AC, DC, a fan that's automatic, and it's got two, uh, two charging ports, and it can charge at a very high rate, both of them at the same time. So it's a very powerful charger. It will charge my iPhone automatically or wirelessly you know, while I'm working. And to me, it's better to charge, have a lot of chargers and charge fast while you're working in your garage, tuning, cleaning your stuff. So instead of charging all your batteries for six hours, and you can't be around for six hours really, right? It's charge everything in an hour, hour and a half, 
and that way you're, you're monitoring everything. So I charge it here on the corner of my table while I'm working. So that's a really good thing. If you don't have a lot of funds, uh, there's a cheaper Hobby Mate. These are like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And Hobby Mate or Toolkit RC. June C is a good one. And then there's another one. Um, I forgot the brand. But I'll put links in, all the, in the description. The only thing I want to caution, these are amazing chargers for the money. But the thing I want to caution is uh, they don't have a, a, a DC, AC input, which is your house current. You have to have a DC input. So, and how you do that, you need an, you need an adapter, a converter, more money, right? But what I've done is uh, in the past, this I used my old laptop uh, adapters in the house or that are not being used and changed the plug because these take any kind of DC input, you know, 12 volts to 36 volts. Stuck, sticking some power in there, and then you're able to charge your your variety of your lipos for you know 40 bucks. So there you go. Keep safe with your your batteries, not like me. And and when you dispose of these things, discharge them, you know, as low as it can go, and and then dispose them not in your garbage can because it still has a little charge and it's not good for the environment. But look for a recycling battery recycling center in your area, okay? Thanks a ton.